good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is, whenever you're watching this. I wanted to talk today about a lovely topic, abortion. A friend and I were talking not too long ago, this has been about a couple weeks, and um, we're both believers in Christ, we strive to follow Christ. And uh, we're talking about abortion, and, and he, uh, he's, been, he's been doing this for quite some time now. Um, we don't live in the same state, um, which that is fixing to change, thankfully. But he's been, he's been doing these um, events and standing up, standing against abortion. And I mean... It really got my mind turning. Uh, he really challenged me in ways that uh, I really didn't even think about. It's through my own ignorance. As, as a follower of Christ, you know, yes, we understand abortion is wrong. But it's so funny because we seem to always make excuses. Oh, it's wrong, but... You know, what if in the case of, and then you fill in the blank. We make an exception. And you know, the more I thought about it, the more I realized that, no, it is just flat out wrong. Murder is murder is murder. And in this case, it's murder of the innocent. It's murder. And it's just, it's sad. You know, thankfully, the Holy Spirit's given me the understanding to see it clearly, and that is the truth. It's what I pray for daily, is the truth. And the truth convicts. It convicts you right in your heart. And it's uncomfortable. And a lot of times we don't want to see the truth. You know, we, we, we don't. It's just, the truth is just too much. But you have to be brave. You have to be brave to see it. And through God, through the, Christ, through the strength of Christ, He will guide you through it to be obedient. It's not by your own strength at all. But going back to abortion, where is the church? Where is the church in this topic? And I say that mainly pointing to the church building, not the church people, which are the believers. But where's the church in this topic? Why isn't the church standing up? I have a theory, and I'll tell you why. Because they'll lose your money. Because it's all about your money. This is a deep topic. This goes deep. This is just what's been shown to me. And I don't know it all. And I am not a smart man. And I'll be the first to admit it. I am not a smart man. Everything that I've been shown is through Christ. This is His eyes. And His voice. Because I'm not smart enough to put this together on my own. But I tell you. This all revolves around money both sides the abortion side it deals with money and on the church side the lack of standing up it deals with money the less followers the less people that come through those church doors the less income they make which is the less little buildings they get to create they don't get to make the gymnasium. They don't get to make the auditorium. They don't get to make the prayer chapel. They don't get to make all these fun and neat little things. The church has taken Christ and kicked Him out. That's what this all stems from. This is of the devil, my friends. This is of the devil. This is of Satan. What does Satan do? He twists the word. He hides the truth. Where's the church? I'll tell you where the church is that does stand up for this stuff. They're getting shut down. 
the churches that are standing up against the LBGTQWZ, whatever they want to be called today, they're getting shut down. But that church, those churches are taking a stand and they are not moving. And man, that lights a fire in my heart because that's what Christ called us to do. It ain't about a building, people. As believers, we can meet anywhere. I don't need a building. We could meet right here in my little bedroom. I mean, shoot, let's stuff it full. I don't care. My friend's pastor that he goes to church at, he, he brought up a very good point. My friend was telling me the other day on the phone, he said, uh, he said, my pastor has gone so far, and the pastor's about my age. I think he's, he's in his late 30s. But this, this, this man has gone so far in church while talking about abortion and standing up for it, has gone so far to say, if you're not against abortion, I question your salvation. I agree. Golly, man. It's conviction. That convicts, man. That hurts. Be thankful it hurts. Be thankful these things convict. Because therefore we know that we are not bastards. Because God chastens those that He loves, that are His children. He teaches us. He spareth not the rod on us because we are His children. It convicts for a reason. It challenges for a reason. It hurts for a reason. I'm not perfect, man. <laughs> There's things that convict me every day. And it's my own fault because I want to know the truth. I pray daily, multiple times daily for the truth. Jesus, what is your truth? Show me your truth. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that is just, I believe that's how we all should be. Seek the truth. The tr Jesus tells us the truth shall set us free and free we shall be indeed. The truth is in here, but you have to read it. You have to study it. I bought this Bible in 2012. 2012. Uh, yeah, I think it was 2012 or 2013. I'm sorry, I don't remember. But I wanted a King James Bible that wasn't the little thin, tiny pages. So I could write all in it and mark it up. And since then, I've, I've studied this Bible. And you can tell where I spend a lot of time because it is marked up. I write notations. I highlight, underline, you know, cross out notations as my knowledge increases. And as I'm shown, you know, the, the higher meanings of things. And I mean, that's called growing. It's growing within the Word. Where you, your, your beliefs of when you start is not where you're going to end up when it's all over. You grow with it. You know, uh, I'm, I'm sure you understand what I'm talking about. I'm not, I'm not a very good speaker. <laughs> I just try to get the point across. But abortion, there is a sinister plan that has been in effect, that is in effect, and that is happening right before your eyes. Right underneath your noses. It's disgusting. And there's a reason you don't know about it. It's hidden. This goes so deep. The abortion topic is what ties so much of it together of the evil.
I'll put it to you like this. Where do you think that those aborted bodies go? You ever wondered that? How many millions of abortions happen? Where do those, where do those pieces go? Well, recently, it's been exposed that they've been getting sold. Oh, yeah. They have been getting sold. You want to know the truth about some things? Start looking into Pepsi-Cola and abortion. See where that ties together. Tell you one thing. You won't see me with a Pepsi product. It's disgusting. It's so disgusting. It's so vile. That is the evil. You people that watch the Super Bowl, you are participating in witchcraft. Those halftime shows anymore, they don't even hide them anymore. It's in your face. And see, a lot of you pick up on this, but yet you continue. But we're saved by grace. Yes, through faith. Yes. You know where faith comes from? Being obedient! <laughs> I mean, it's so simple. It's hard. The walk is hard. We're promised the walk is hard. But Christ will never leave us. But the, the idea is so simple. Look how many times Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commandments. The Bible is in harmony within itself. If there's things that don't make sense or seem to contradict, the problem lies within us. In today's time, we have all the tools at our fingertips. If you're watching this video right now, you have all the tools needed to learn more about the Bible and, and to learn, really, deeper meanings of things. The Strong's Greek, the Strong's Hebrew, King James. All of this is online. Hey, you can get it all for your stupid phone, your smartphone or whatever. I mean, <laughs> it, it just, it goes so deep. You, you know where the problem ends up? It ends up in our lap. The problem is us. Laziness. And um, I'm speaking from experience. I've been tied into this world for a long time. And I've... Not bragging, but being honest. Christ has put it on my heart to purge myself from the world. Because there is going to come a time to where He's going to say, It's time, let's go. Leave. Leave all your stuff. Leave everything. He tells us. It's in, a, it's in the Word. It's in His Word. It came out of His lips. Matthew 24. Read it. Uh, it's also Luke 21. Read it. And I believe it touches on it uh, in Mark as well. And it's backed up too with Revelation. I mean, this stuff is right there. And I'm not trying to get off on that because that's another video. I challenge you guys to go to abolishhumanabortion.com. The AHA is a group of people nationwide that are anti-abortion extremists. Meaning they follow the Bible. 
and they believe the teachings of Christ, and they follow the teachings of Christ, and they spread the gospel through these clinics, and they make a stand that abortion is wrong. And guess what? <laughs> One of the first videos I watched of theirs, you know what the guy said? We don't want your money. <laughs> You're already off to a 99% good start. They're not about money. They want your support. They want your body out there with them. The way it should be. They want your voice out there telling people the truth. And it is a loving thing. The world doesn't want to be convicted by sin. They don't like that conviction either. But the difference between us as followers and the world is that we're listening to the conviction and we're changing our ways through Christ. All we have to do is have faith of a mustard seed. A mustard seed. Hmm, that big. Christ does the rest. It hurts. But he told us it would. I tell you what, I you know what? 2012 is when I really started following after Christ. And it's been a, it's been a tough tough time. I've had a lot happen. <laughs> I look back in these what is it now? 6 years. My life has gotten horrible. I mean, if I snapshot it back from 2012 to 2018, my life has gotten horrible. But it's so awesome. <laughs> and it's going to continue to get tougher. But it's going to continue to get more and more awesome. See, there's that pleasure, there's that joy, there's that comfort in following after Christ. see what the Bible says when Jesus said, you know, you must be as a child to see the kingdom of heaven. That child, man, that sits there is just, where are you at? Where is it at? Where are Jesus? Where are you? What do I have to do? What do I need to do with my life? My past was so, it was horrible. So sin-filled. So hurtful. I'm washed clean. I follow Christ out of love, out of desire. I don't follow him out of obligation, it's out of desire. He loved me. A worthless, no good person. I deserve death and a gruesome death at that for things I've done in my life. Yet he loved me. So much to say, it's okay. Come on, let's go. If you're thinking about abortion, don't do it. It's always been shown to me as, and within our time, we're given these little moments, or just tiny moments, where we will make the biggest decisions that will affect us for the rest of our life. And it doesn't matter sometimes what you do in your entire life. It's what you did in that tiny sliver of a moment. That's what matters.
in reading this, in praying, in seeking Christ, I see more and more of these tiny moments that I never even realized. And I strive to make the most of them. Because, man, when it's all over, and it's fixing to get bad, but when all of this is over with, I want Christ to look at me and pat me on the back and say, good job, Travis. Well done. Come on, let's go home. That's what I desire. The more I read, the more I see the Apostle Paul was that way too. It's that longing. And I felt it the other day. I felt a feeling I hadn't felt in over 20 years. <laughs> it was homesickness. <laughs> homesickness. <laughs> And it was realizing that I'm not home. I might be in my dwelling, but this is not home. And I long for home. I want to go home. This is the roadmap to get home. And I desire to stay on the trail. And through Christ, Learn how to read the map.